the zinc apparently inside the chrome started to bubble and, and peel out and caused almost all the chrome on the entire bike to be damaged. It was gonna be $18,000. So this story starts where the guys are at the shop and around the same time I get a call from Caleb and I also get a message on my Facebook saying that there is a 2004 Honda Rune with 200 miles on it for sale only about an hour and a half away in Maryland. So it was listed for sale for $11,000 which was insane because I don't know two weeks three weeks prior we had just sold a 2004 Honda Rune black with 5,000 miles for 18 or 19 thousand dollars. So with this bike with that low miles, it's probably worth it. You know, if it's in good condition, it's probably worth around. We were figuring out 20, 25 to 27 thousand dollars. So at 11 grand, it was a it was a killer, insane deal. So we called the it was it was a Honda dealership. We call, at first we thought it was a scam. We called the Honda dealership, a guy's super cool. He tells us what happened. He tells us that a guy was a collecting motorcycles. Had a couple weird stuff. He, he collected them, never really rode them, but liked the idea of collecting them. So this guy collecting motorcycles had him in a storage unit. And the roof of the storage unit started to leak and just kind of accumulated a puddle. And over years and years and years of the bike just sitting there, the zinc apparently inside the chrome started to bubble and, and peel out and caused almost all the chrome on the entire bike to be damaged. So you get this basically perfect Honda Rune in amazing shape, but every chrome piece is damaged. Now luckily the, the rims were not chrome. Uh, you could get chrome, we chrome wheels, these were not. That's one last thing you have to fix, but it was still a pretty big deal. So this collector contacted the Honda guy and he wanted to buy a brand new 2018 Honda Goldwing. And he wanted to trade in a couple bikes. We later found out how much the Honda dealers had paid for this rune. How much did you pay for when you first walked up from the guy? Fifteen hundred. What? So they gave him fifteen hundred dollars for this rune, where they in turn spent a couple hundred dollars getting it running, changing the fluids, just kind of cleaning it up the best they could. Where they sold it to us for ten thousand five hundred. They made a hefty profit. We were pumped to get a rune at that price. Everyone was happy. He sold a couple, he, he, he traded in a couple other bikes with that deal that the Honda, the Honda dealership, you know, made out pretty well. So we decided we, this would be a great video. We get the cameras and we get the, we get the van and we load everyone up. We go there to make the video and we had a great time. We did make a good video about it, about buying this bike. The guy we met was really cool. The guy who was selling the bike to us and it was just an all around good time. We're bringing the bike back and we didn't know exactly what we wanted to do with it. We had, we had three different options. One, sell the bike as is, make a, make a quick flip, make some money. Two, we could bring it back to original. Or three, we could modify it, and instead of chroming everything, we could powder coat it. Now, the Honda dealership, when they were working on this thing, they, they also considered the same options. And the one option that they first looked into was what it would cost to replace all the chrome pieces with OEM Honda chrome. If that was even a possibility, so he didn't even, he, he called Honda, or he priced everything up, and asked to see if what that would cost. When he found out the price, he didn't even bother to see if it was available because there's not that many parts, you know, from Honda available for the room because they only made about 3,000 of them in about 18 month period. It was gonna be $18,000 to replace all the chrome on that bike. So we go up there, we buy it, we find out how much he paid for it, we're pumped for the guy, we bring it back. We decide within a couple, I don't know, maybe a couple, a couple days that let's just throw it on eBay. Let's see what'll happen. We're gonna throw it up on eBay. So we started the reserve at 10.5, which is what we had into it. And we made it very clear that if we, if it does 10.6, you know, then it does 10.6 and that, that's all we get. And at that point, I'd be happy, get my money back. I make a couple bucks, we make a good video. Everyone's happy. So we put it up on eBay. The same time we launched the eBay listing, we also launched the video. And we had a lot, we had a lot of, probably 50,000 people in the first, I don't know, four days watch the video. So all these people are leaving the video and they're jumping on eBay to see where the bid's at and if they were interested in it, they may have, they may have bid on it. Within the first hour, it's already bid up to like 10.7 and we're watching this, watching this go up and up and up and up and we're getting super pumped. So at, about midweek, we had bids around $13,000. We had, we had what we thought were legitimate bids around like 11 and 
11, 11, 2, and 11, 3, and then someone bid it up to $13,000. So we were thinking, why, why would you possibly bid it from 11 and take it the whole way up to 13? And then that person had zero eBay score. The person who was bidding against that person also had zero eBay score, also looked like he was from Russia. It looked really shady. We didn't know why this was happening. And so that eliminated all the, all the buyers at like 11, 11, 5, because normally you're willing to pay another 100 bucks and that 100 bucks ended up being another 1,000 bucks, a little more than what you pay because it's like, oh, 11, 5, oh, 11, 6, oh, I'm not going to lose it for 100 bucks and you keep on going up. But when someone takes you from 11 to 13, a lot of people just kind of, just, just kind of bail out. So then we actually, we have contacts at eBay. We called up eBay and said, hey, can you guys drop these bids? Because these bids, they're not responsive to us. They're not getting back to us. We tried contacting them. They seem completely bogus. And they were taking out actual, actual bidders. They're, they're, they're discouraging actual bidders. And eBay was like, there's nothing we can do about it. We can't take them out. So, you know, we're just going to keep an eye on what's going on. Maybe they're real. Maybe they're not. But they're not, con they're not contacting us back. And they have zero eBay, eBay score. So then we're watching this thing. And at the last minute, I think at the last second, the thing jumps up, jumps up, jumps up. Bam. The bike sells at 15.3. The highest bid is at 14.6. We have 17 seconds left. We have 14 bidders. <clears throat> you probably already loaded. Nine, nine, eight, six, five. Oh. 15, one. Three, two, one. <laughs> That's a, that's a, that happened. That just happened. Yo, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah! And 15.3, the, the person who bought it had a, had a pretty decent eBay score. At this point, we're pumped. 15.3, we bought it for 10.5. We're making close to five grand on this deal within a week. We're, we're super excited. So we call the guy who bought it. The guy's pumped. He's like, yeah, this thing's awesome. I, I, you know, I bought it. I'm, I'm glad. He's like, can you ship it to me? I'm like, we can ship it to you for 500 bucks. He's, he's like, yeah, let's do it. He's like, How do, he's like, do you want me to send you a check or wire the money? And everything's going really, really easy. Well, actually, at first, when we first contacted the person, the wrong guy answers the phone. And he's like, you didn't know that someone bought the bike. At that point, we're like, oh, man, did your kid buy the bike? And he didn't, you didn't, the dad didn't know. We, we get a hold of the guy. Everything's good. We're super pumped. We're about to get the money. And I say to him at the end, I'm like, just so, just, just out of curiosity, I mean, you watched the video, right? Because we had a walk around video showing all the flaws with the Chrome, test drive video showing all the flaws with the Chrome, and then, of course, the, uh, the, the YouTube video showing the whole story about it. And he's like, he's like, no, I, I didn't actually watch the video. I didn't, I didn't get a chance to, but with 200 miles on, I know that bike's perfect. And at that point, my heart sunk, and I'm, I was like, I was like, hey, just so you know, I mean, I, I kind of feel bad, but you're, you thought you were getting a perfect rune, you know, a, almost a $30,000 bike for 15000 That wasn't suspicious to you at all. He bought the bike. He put the deposit down. Like, it, it, it's his bike, but I'm like, I don't want to sell anyone a bike that they don't want. So I tell him, listen, I, I explained to him the situation. I'm like, uh, clearly, I'm sure you want to get out of this deal. You thought it was this. It's not that. Just say the word and I'll, you know, I mean, we will, we'll have to put it on eBay again. So that was not a huge deal because we had another bid. That was just $100 underneath that that also looked like a real bidder. So we get his phone number from eBay. We call him up. The exact same thing. He never watched the video. He never read the description. He just saw the pictures. And he was willing to buy it too. We told him what happened. And he was completely out. So at this point, we just scratched the whole thing. We're going to put it back on eBay with a zero reserve. We're going to put it at $0 or $1, whatever you do and see what it creeps up at. And whatever it sells for, it sells. A week later, the highest bid is 11.3. Not as high as we were hoping it was gonna be, but 11.3, I think it was 11.3.12. So at that point, we made $812. The guy contacts us, he's super cool. He sends us a, us a check. The bike just got put up on the truck and drove away. Where's it going, Ohio? It's Chicago. Chicago or something. It's going to a, a big motorsports place, and I think he's gonna fix it. So, but how much money did we actually make on the bike considering all the things that happened to it? Selling it on eBay, we made $812. The original Rune video that we made buying the Rune had 160,000 views 
and we made $689 off of that video. We made another video with the Rune called the Honda Rune and everything about it. That had about 80,000 views. That, vid that video made $220. We had a walk around video and a test drive video. Both of those videos combined made about $37. So in total, we made about $1,750 minus the cost of us going to the shop, minus time, no materials. We didn't put gas in it. Uh, so yeah, probably around 1700 bucks, which was not, not bad. It was, it was a super, super incredibly rare bike. The first time we had one, we actually had people come from seven hours away just to look at it, just to see the bike. Very unique bike, very limited production. It's got a really unique story about it. We'll put the link in the description. That's probably one of the uh, most unique bikes we've ever sold. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you guys later. What you just saw was, was, was made like four or four months ago, three months ago. And the reason we didn't actually release that video is because we kind of were suspicious that the, the Rune Saga was not quite over. And we were right. So what you guys, the last you guys saw, the Rune was leaving. The Rune was, was bought by a company, a uh, dealership in Chicago. And they were excited about it and we thought we had you know, made a couple bucks on it. Well, let me fill you in on what happens next. So shippers come up, about two weeks after they buy it, shippers come up, and they pick up the bike, it goes on a rollback. It's, it's not, not the best place to, not the best way to ship a bike, but it, it worked. The shippers couldn't figure out how to actually strap the bike down, so I, I come up there, I see them with, walking around with big chains, and I'm like, what are you guys doing? So I, I give them a set of tank straps, and I show them how to strap it down. We get it down, and it, it works perfectly, and it, it goes on its way. The, uh, the company gets it a couple weeks later, and they're, they're happy with the bike. When we bought the bike, we bought it uh, with the assumption that the Honda dealership would get us the title. And that this is fairly normal. When, when you, you buy a bike from a dealership, all right, we, they just got the bike. The title didn't come in yet. The title always comes in. It's no big deal. So I told the dealership that we sold it to the same thing. I was like, the title will be in a couple weeks. It's no big deal. They, they understood it. It was, it was, you know, it was fun. Well, a couple of weeks go by, and we're not seeing the title. And the dealership that bought it is like, hey, what's the deal? And I'm like, let me go. Let me go back. Let me try to find out. Let me try to figure this thing out. So what we find out is the, the original seller, who was the original owner of the Rune, could not find the title. That's not a big deal. Um, he, bought the, he bought the bike in Pennsylvania, and now he's a Maryland resident. The bike has been sitting in a Maryland storage unit for most of its life. So you can't find the title, no big deal. He, he needs to go back to Pennsylvania PennDOT and just request for a duplicate title. So I'm like, okay, this is fine. This is going to work out. He goes to PennDOT to request a new title and PennDOT says, there's never been an original title. We can't give you a duplicate title because we have no records of this ever being in our system. And at this point, things are getting a little strange. The Honda dealership's telling me this. I'm trying to figure out what to do. I'm trying to tell, I'm telling this to the company that we that we sold it to and trying to keep this all this so this is about a, maybe six weeks into it the issue that we're coming into with this is that if PennDOT is seeing that they've never actually seen the title and there's no records of the title then that would say that there's no there's never been any taxes paid for it so someone's gonna owe back taxes for a sixteen seventeen thousand dollar bike which that's going to be a problem because who's going to pay for that? The Honda dealership that I bought the bike from says the problem is with the Honda dealership who originally sold him the bike. A crazy coincidence that that is the local Honda dealership at the Lancaster Honda. Like two minutes down the road, I could probably throw, someone could probably throw a baseball and hit him. And I'm friends with those guys. They're great guys. So what the guy who sold, what the dealership that sold it to me is saying is that when it was originally sold, the customer came, bought it with cash, paid the taxes, but the, it, the title was never actually issued and sent to PennDOT. Because back then they did everything with paper, now everything's electronic. So what they're saying is that the paper that said they had to check with the taxes and the registration and all that stuff never actually got to PennDOT and it got lost. This sounds kind of fishy because this is a, uh, Lancaster Honda is not a very large dealership. So they would notice very quickly that if in their books, they had paid 
two, three thousand dollars in taxes and all this registration fees, and they still had the money. So I go down there, I ask them to look up their books. But this is we're talking oh four, we're talking like sixteen years ago. This is a long time ago. So they actually don't they're all, they're only required to keep records up up to ten years. Uh, they did have some records for it, and they can see that 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 hey, this this has been paid. And everything that they did was right. So I go back to the Honda dealership that I bought it from, and I say, hey, these people are saying they're doing it right. He's saying, no, they didn't do it right. And then a couple weeks go by. The dealership that I sold it to is saying, what's the deal with the title? I don't really have any good answers for him. So we're getting advice from the dealership I bought it from saying that if the original selling dealership, Lancaster Honda, can come up with the original date of the MSO, the manufacturer certificate of origin, that they can use that to get a title. So there's some they're going back Honda dealership with Honda dealership. They're not getting anywhere. I just roll up there and I say, hey, can can we get this thing done? Now keep in mind, neither Honda dealership did anything wrong. It's just goofy circumstances. Uh, they're both great dealerships to work with. So I go to Lancaster Honda and I say, hey, let's can we can we can we figure this out? And so he jumps online. He tries to he tries to track that down. Honda tells him that he can't get it. Only the new owner can get it. So I call Honda, and I say, I'm the owner, and, and I need to get this thing. And they're like, yeah, sure, we're sending it out to you right now. And I'm thinking, this is it. This, this is the piece. This is the, this is the piece of the puzzle that we need. If I give this back to the, the Honda dealership that I bought it from, they're going to get the title. No problem. So first we were told that the guy who bought it paid straight cash for it. Lancaster Honda tells me that he financed it. So right there, it's like, hold on. If he financed it, the bank would have a copy of the title. The bank, would, the bank might even have the title. So we contact the bank. Bank has no records of it. All, all these things. There's so many. A lot of people drop the ball on this, mainly PennDOT. When the dealership that I sold it to contacts me, I have nothing good to say. I, I'm, last thing I want to tell them is all this stuff and him be like, wow, what is going on with this? They get fed up enough that they send me a text message and they're like, hey, what's going on with this? And at this point, so I paid for the bike, of course. They paid, this is what I, this is what I sold it to, they paid me for the bike. Right now, they've got a bike that they paid for with no title that they can't sell. I'm feeling bad. I give them their money back. I say, listen, this has been two months. The risk has been on you because you bought it and I kept your money. Here's your money back. Now the risk is all on me. Now I'm with no bike, no title, and I'm less like 1300 bucks. So all the risk is on me. The dealership that I bought it from was not willing to give me a refund of of the money. And so 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 keep in mind, it's not unusual for dealerships to buy bikes from other dealerships and then send send them the title later. You buy without a title because you know the the bank might have the title, and then they got to pay it off, and they pay it off, and they send you the title. It takes a couple of weeks, but it never. It, it's always something's going on. It's never penned out as saying this bike doesn't exist. This title does not exist. That's where things get really strange. So they're saying that with this MSO, with the date and paperwork of Honda sending an MSO to Lancaster Honda, that we can get a title with that. I send it over to them, nothing. That's not going to help us out. So it seems like it was a coincidence where anytime I'm working with the Honda dealership that I bought it from, the dealership that I sold it to up in Chicago just somehow knew it, and they'd be contacting me the same day. Weeks would go by, they'd... I'm working with them, and they're, they're contacting me. Hey, where's the title? They give me an ultimatum, the dealership I sold it to. They said, pay, pay us 300 bucks for the cost of shipping, ship the bike back, keep the bike. Or give us $1,000 for us to continue selling the bike. Now, their reasoning was because the bike depreciated, which is just not true. But I do understand that their point of that they've had the bike for, you know, three or four months, and they've not been able to sell it even though I didn't give them their money back. I, I decided to tell them, I'm like, listen, I'm going to buy the bike back. I feel like I've ruined all of my credibility with this dealership. The only thing I could do is, hey, I'm going to pay them back for their shipping. So the worst that happened to them was they were out about $11,000 for maybe two months, um, which sucks. That definitely sucks. So I feel like I made it right. I'm getting the bike shipped back. Honda finally tells me that they're able to get the title. And it's about the same time that I tell them that I found someone who could get us a title, but it's going to cost 2200 bucks. And the same day, they're like, oh, no, we found someone who gets the title. We'll get you the title. I'm getting the room back, and I'm getting 
hopefully get the title. So as of right now, we spent, to give you the breakdown, uh, 10.5 to buy the bike, 300 for us to go get it, 300 for us to pay for when we shipped it, from when we got shipped to Chicago, 500 to ship it back, if we're gonna ship it back quick. So we have 11.6 into this bike. Minus, we made some money off the videos. We have four different videos with this bike, which made $1,888.10. That brings us down to a, still a negative, but we still own the bike. So we own the bike at $9,711.90. Still one of the cheapest rooms on the planet that we could buy. And interestingly enough, this motorcycle was transported within the, what, 16 years it's been around. In the past three months, it's been transported more miles than are on the odometer. It's probably been transported like 2,000 miles. The odometer says like 200 something. So we're gonna get the bike back, start the process all over again, and hopefully we can make some money on this. I'm pretty confident we can make some money on this. It is a cool bike. If anything, I like having it. I like having it hang around. Let me know if you guys want it, and uh, we'll keep you guys filled in on what the uh, latest scoop is with the super rare Honda Room. See you guys later. Don't forget to subscribe.